Hello, everyone. My name is Hyun Soo. Uh, today, I will be talking about this essence of this magnetic topological insulator, specifically manganese business telluride. Okay. So this is my very brief contents. Um, I will be talking about the background of um, the overall talk and the controversy regarding the gap size of this very specific example and the future outlook for the heterostructure, which can be further ap applied to the device application. Okay, so before I really dive into this uh, images, I guess I need to first briefly mention about the integer quantum hall, hall uh, integer quantum hall effect. So this integer quantum hall effect was first observed in two dimensional electron system under very strong uh, magnetic field in perpendicular direction. So what's quantized is the conductivity is quantized in, uh, in the unit of E squared over H. Okay, so after this integer quantum hall was observed, it's quite natural to uh, natural for the researchers to move on to search for uh, quantum um, quantum anomalous hall effect, which has the intrinsic magnetic field, so that you don't need the external magnetic field to be applied to achieve this system. But it was a little bit difficult, so they found, first found the a quantum spin hall effect, which uh, is from uh, which is found in the platform of two-dimensional quantum hall uh, quantum quantum well system uh, that has the cadmium telluride and the mercury telluride quantum well, which is also very well known as two-dimensional topological insulator. So after that, when three D topological insulator was predicted and um, experimentally observed in uh, two thousand nine. Um, in this uh, bismuth and antimony tetradimide system that includes the bismuth telluride and bismuth selenide and antimony telluride systems. Um, yeah, so after that, those discoveries, we can definitely use those 3D uh, topological insulator, which is simpler system to study further about the quantum spin, quantum spin hole effect. So if we look at this uh, first image, that, um, what uh, this system entails is it has the bulk insulating band, uh, insulating bulk gap, but it has the, um, at the surface, it's a conducting at the surface. So the surface state is conductive. Also, uh, what that means is that there is no gap at the direct point. So the electrons can freely move between the valence band to the conduction band and vice versa. So, and then, and then another interesting features, important features about this system is that it has the spin momentum locking and then time reversal symmetry. What the spin momentum locking means is if we look at this real space image, um, the spin up and spin down, they are in the separate, in two separate channels. So they're not mixed and matched, but one channel only contains one spin direction. And then also they move in two different directions. Um, those two channels move in two different directions. And time reversal symmetry prevents those two electrons with different spins to scatter. So they it prevents the backscattering, uh, prevents the backscattering. And this um, very rigid and sturdy system um, is to be used to study the quantum anomalous Hall effect. But since the since the two spin directions are opposite, and then they cancel out the net current as a whole. Uh, you need to break that uh, time reversal symmetry and give a little perturbation to this. So easy way would be just applying the out of field magnetic direction, uh, magnetic field in out of out of plane direction. But for the purpose of quantum anomalous Hall effect, they dope this um, transition metals with a high magnetic ordering such as chromium or vanadium. They dope it and then they give, um, since they already have the magnetic ordering, it, it induces uh, induces the spontaneous magnetization and forms the magnetic field inside of the sample itself. So as a result, it breaks the time reversal symmetry and it opens the gap at the dark point. But there's also a problem about this system is that the dopants are not uh, evenly distributed spatially. So what that leads to is the magnetization or the magnetic properties are also not uh, manifested in uh, homogeneous, it's, it's not homogeneously manifested. So we now move on to this new system that has the manganese layer sandwiched between the bis two bismuth layer on, on, on the top and the bottom. So since it is layered, uh, it has better order and more uniform and it has the ferromagnetic uh, um, ferromagnetic features to it that has the annealed temperature around 24 Kelvin. 
Okay, so uh, since we know this, uh, know about the system, have to fabricate, right? So one very frequently used method is just to use the flux method to make the bulk and exfoliate it to uh, study this. Also, um, also uh, MB grown sample is also now getting uh, uh, quite extensively explored these days. Okay, so now we're going back to the idea of the gap. Um, so, uh, so previously, uh, the initially predicted and calculated, uh, um, calcul in initial calculation predict that uh, gap is around 88 milli electron volt. And this direct observation of this band structure also quite agrees with this uh, prediction by 70 milli electron volt. Okay, so it seems to be smooth sailing, but there is disagreement uh, within the community saying that Oh, okay, even below this meal temperature and with the temperature variation measurement and surface degradation, um, uh, surface degradation, there's still no gap. They don't, uh, three papers uh, published in the same year uh, saying that there is no gap. Okay, so what is then, what is the truth? So they, they attribute this uh, phenomena saying that, oh, maybe the surface is reconstructed um, such that the magnetic moment is reconstructed. Also, uh, maybe there is multi-domain with different magnetization orientation that would weaken the overall overall magnetic ordering within the system. Okay, uh, but still not sure. So there is another effort using STM. So they, uh, they what they would measure is on this magnetic uh, magnetic topology insulator system. They measure the DIDV, which measure the local density of state at each very certain point. So what they do is they do the spatial mapping. So each point, 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 many, many, many points. So you, you map it in space, direct, in real space. And then to see those band gaps, you need to transform um, into K space, which is the momentum space. So they take the Fourier transform, they measure the gap about 50 million electron volt. Also still doesn't agree. So it's still very quite controversial topic, I think. And I move on to the next uh, next uh, uh, next topic, which is the future outlook for the layered uh, topological insulator and magnetic topological insulator heterostructures. So magnetic topological insulator is already interesting by itself, but for its own septuple layer having the ferromagnetic ordering. But if you stack one layer on top of another layer, it actually shows anti ferromagnetic ordering. The magnetic uh, direction changes. At the second layer. So, oh, okay, interesting. Then, how about if they insert the quintuple layer, which is the to regular topological layer without without any manganese on it? So, with a variation in this formula, with the variation of the m zero one two would give you the antiferromagnetic uh, topological insulator. On this top and the bottom would be antiferromagnetic, but at the at, at m about three would be will be a ferromagnetic insulator. So this one, sometimes ferromagnetic, sometimes antiferromagnetic, right? Over when it's M is over three, when, it's, uh, when the M is over three. Okay. So th there is not much experiment done yet after uh, when this heterostructure, when the M is over three. So I guess this is the uh, quite um, interesting insight for uh, uh, to further investigate on. Okay, so another another heterostructure is also achieved by using this uh, bulk manganese telluride instead of having manganese inside of the bismuth telluride. They have this bulk manganese telluride, which shows the antiferromagnetic property itself, and then they grow the bismuth telluride on top of that. So what they induce is that it could be it could be something like a, 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 a magnetic proximity effect. So uh, it's not within the layer itself, but within the interface, um, it is indu inducing uh, uh, inducing the magnetic property on the topological insulator. Okay, so with that idea, it could be further um, applied to the device. So having that edge edge channel um, 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 chiral edge mode, which I mentioned in the very first. Uh, which I showed in very first slide, I maybe didn't mention, but so with the with the isolated channel, and then they don't um, they don't cross or they don't interact, so they uh, it can be um, it can be used 
for um, for this electronic purposes to um, to have it have it uh, independently formed. And also another method, uh, another one is the uh, is also is utilizing the magnetic proximity effect uh, that I mentioned in the in the um, just just a slide before. Okay, so this is the uh, conclusion um, of my talk. So I briefly first mentioned about the background um, of this magnetic topological insulator and um, the little bit of history how the manganese bismuth telluride came into a place. And I also went through the unaddressed controversy um, within this community uh, regarding the surface band gap size. Um, also, I mentioned about the magnetic proximity approach to realize the uh, magnetic topological insulator uh, with the intrinsic magnetic field. Lastly, very briefly talked about the uh, device application using those um, features of the magnetic topological insulators. Okay, thank you. If you have any questions, I can take. Thank you so much. Any questions for Hung Su? Um, I have a question. <clears throat> so, uh, going back to the quantum Hall effect, uh, can you maybe talk a little bit about why it happens? Like, um, like what is the difference between applying like a really strong magnetic field versus just like a not too strong magnetic field? Mm -hmm. So it's uh, so when you, for the integer quantum Hall effect, so it's, it's similar to just regular quantum Hall effect, but this case with the Landau quantization, those um, those uh, conductivity or I should say like a current will be uh, formed into a precession, kind of like a, it forms like a loop if you apply the magnetic field in the out of plane direction. But if you, uh, the weaker the I would feel direction magnetic field it is, the uh, the precession loop is larger. So it takes larger space to get quantized. But if you put stronger magnetic field, it's just quantized a lot. Okay, I see, that makes sense. Thank you. That was a nice explanation. <laughs> Any other questions? I have a question. Um, can you describe a little more about the experiments of how the um, band diagram is observed? Mm -hmm. You have those nice uh, images of that, of these images. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do mm -hmm. you know how that, what the experiment is? Uh -huh. I, I believe it is the um, RPES, the angle resolved photo emission. So, uh, so is that the question? So like experiment technique? Yeah, like maybe do you know anything about ARPAS and how, how it works? Because it's, it's neat how you can like mm -hmm. so directly um, image essentially the band structure you get theoretically. Right. So the how it's basically using the uh, uh, um, the photoelectric effect. So they have this always provide this uh, beam. They, they have 6.3 electron volts, seven electron volt, about seven electron volts. They shoot those beams at the surface of the surface of this um, sample. And then, uh, and then the photo, photo current or the electrons that's, uh, that's the gained energy from this uh, photons has, is escaping with a certain amount of kinetic energy. I believe it's the, there's like an equation saying H nu is equal to uh, no, maybe kinetic energy is equal to H nu minus binding energy and minus work function, something like that. And then they plot basically with that um, kinetic energy versus uh, because the angle angle is relative. This momentum is relative to to the angle, though I, I believe the polar angle. So you can map basically based on the angle versus the uh, energy that they collect. Mm 